People in the Irish Republic have voted to scrap the country's constitutional ban on abortion. The Irish government says it hopes to have a new abortion law in place by the end of the year. Those in favour of the law change... Say that again. Those in favour of the law change won a referendum vote by a big margin. In Britain, abortion's been legal for more than 50 years. But what might this mean now for Ireland? I'm joined now by Liam Gibson from SPUC, the Society for the Protection of the Unborn Child. Uh, first of all, Liam, to get your reaction on the referendum result from yesterday. Well, really, the outcome is, is quite disturbing. It's quite appalling that people in Ireland in, in cold blood have chosen to follow the British model of abortion. It's one thing for a woman in a state of panic and maybe under coercion, either through circumstances or an abusive relationship, to opt for an abortion and believe that that's her only option. Uh, but uh, for the people of Ireland, being able to see what abortion has done to Britain, to see what uh, abortion does to women, and knowing so much more about the development of the child in the womb, than, than the people of Britain did back in 1967. Sure, if I can just was, interrupt to say, well, it's, it's on your website, kind of Liam, it says that uh, Spook website, a mark of shame for every Irish voter. Um, people every have a right Irish voter who voted yes. For, for those who have a right to, for, for their own choice, what right does Spook have for, for the freedom of democracy for people to vote? No one, no one can choose to take another human life. That's that's not uh, a democratic right. That's the, uh, there's a human right to life which cannot be supplanted by any state or government, uh, even if they have the this this uh, the overwhelming support of the the, the people. If it was ninety nine percent of the elect electorate who had voted to deprive unborn children of their right to life, that simply wouldn't make it right. It would, certainly, that might be the will of the people. But uh, you, the, oh, democracy doesn't override human rights. So if if the proposal was to introduce slavery uh, and, and the people supported it by 66%, I don't think we would be saying that this is a democratic uh, decision and we just have to accept it. No, you, you work to abolish slavery, you work to uh, abolish abortion because it's the elimination of uh, one human being that's, that's absolutely unique and has... And a, for you, Liam, then, the right scale of the vote with such a huge winning margin for the repeal side, was that a shock for you? It's, it's quite. It was quite a shock because it certainly was not the feedback that uh, that the pro-life campaigns and the, the no vote uh, uh, camp were actually getting on on the ground. Uh, the um, while the the yes vote had the support of uh, of Hollywood celebrities and people like you too, the entire political establishment, the entire media, the trade unions, and the universities and big international donors like George Soros, uh, Amnesty International and, and foreign players like that. Uh, it, it's uh, the pro-life movement in Ireland is a grassroots movement and just in March over 100,000 people were demonstrating on the streets of Dublin against the government's proposals. So this is certainly... Uh, um, uh, quite a shock that the, the outcome didn't. And if I can ask uh, you, Liam, then, you know, the, the vote in Ireland of all places means now that the, the people on your side of the debate are on the wrong side of history. Do you think uh -huh. abortion is here to stay? Uh, uh, abortion's not here to stay, certainly. Uh, the wrong side of history, uh, I mean, if anybody was on the wrong side of history, it was the US Supreme Court whenever they decided that uh, uh, no black man had any rights that a that a white person had to respect. But getting you back know, to the abortion soon, story, though, Liam, changed, how does that and, change and now for Spook? What, what do you do now for, for your uh, campaign? Uh, uh, SPUC is the oldest um, anti-abortion human rights group in the world. We've been existing in Britain for 50 years under the 1967 Abortion Act. Certainly, there's much better prospect of overturning uh, abortion in Ireland, which is more, that is something new, and there's still a, a huge proportion of people who are unhappy with uh, with the result of this referendum. You have to remember that the politicians who introduced this abortion legislation proposal is uh, you know they they all swore uh, at the time whenever they were being elected that they would not support any change in the law and they were all pro life so th there there will be a price for them to pay whenever it comes to re-election and under a different uh, a different parliament there could well be a, a very different 
agenda. So it's it's far from over. And can I ask then, Liam, do, do you think this debate is a religious one? You know, with with religious people wanting stricter laws, secular people wanting to be there uh, for for a choice for women. It, 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 the debate wasn't carried out in religious terms. Uh, the Catholic Church didn't really play a, a leading role um, in in the campaign to to protect the Eighth Amendment. As a matter of fact, it was largely secular uh, groups using scientific and medical data that that were leading the 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 defence of the Eighth Amendment and against the the repeal of it. So it's no, it wasn't. It wasn't carried out uh, on a religious, uh, with a religious message. No, it was, there, there's that might be one element, sure. and certainly a big motivating factor. And before for I, I let you go, Liam, only what, one element. What, what then is the immediate force book? What's your campaign going to do next? Uh, we're simply going to to start again and and try and get through to people just exactly what they've voted for. The um, go back to basics. Uh, start with the development of the unborn child and let people see that that this is a human being it's not just a potential human being it's not a cluster of cells or a blob of jelly you know it's visible it's a visible human being with you know a heartbeat at 21 days by 11 weeks you know a child can have can smile and have form facial uh, expressions you know this is this is a, a a human being, a member of the human family, uh, and deserving of all the rights that we have for ourselves. The people who'll be most disappointed at this vote will be the people of, with special needs children, who will be appalled by what they've seen, because this is a value judgment on every child who's considered to be imperfect, unwanted, or simply inconvenient. Liam, I'm going to leave it there. But before I say the... tura, can you give us the website? Obviously, because this is such a. a an intrinsic debate for listeners to BBC Radio Mercer to find out more about Spook. Give us your website and people can, at leisure, look more it's, into the story. It's spook.org.uk. Liam Gibson, a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on this morning here Thank to you, BBC Helen. Radio Mercer's side. Thank you.